seven degrees out. Oh, oh yeah, seven degrees in Canada. Seven, that's Jeez, Celsius. Celsius. Now I, now I know why I don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's although that's about the only downfall that I can think of, actually. Well, actually, it sounds pretty good right now because if it would just kill off some of these bugs, <laughs> there's so many. Well, that's no doubt. <laughs> think bugs this year. I don't know why. It's just like they're everywhere, and mosquitoes are bad. Time to freeze them. Time to freeze them out. Gotcha. Yeah, that's well, one thing we don't have to deal with here. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we've got a pretty good group come together here. And uh, I'm glad to see you. This is the VIP role play. So this is a role play session, Q&A, live Q&A, private VIP. Although you guys didn't object to me saying that I might put it on YouTube if you let me. No, please do. We all need, you know, the truth is my natural instinct was to say, no, 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 no. And then I said, you know what? That's the old Clint. We really need to all jump out of our shell. I heard this expression. This was a great expression. It said, a silent investor is a broke investor. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's so true. You know, there's something to be said about virtual attraction marketing. Can you all hear me? We can. Okay, great. And that, and that is... What, what, what I'm talking about when I put things on YouTube, you know, um, I, I started YouTube with the idea of getting JV partners, but I also started YouTube with the idea of having marketing out there that, that is free. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? It makes a lot of sense. Cool. So, um, yeah. So, so that's, what's up. That's what's up with that. Um, I like doing that. You get a lot of, I'm sorry. I was just muting somebody with a lot of background noise. We, uh, you know, you do this virtual attraction marketing stuff and eventually, you know, like, I don't know, I've got a hundred and something videos. That's not much, but, um, I've heard from the guys that have like a thousand videos out. They're like, yeah, people contact us every day. So mean like the flip man. Yeah. Sellers, buyers, you know, mentees, like everybody, they, they all contact me every day. So there is something to be said, Clint, for sure. About I really uh, believe it. I tip my hat to you and I've said it before. I'll say it again. Thank you very much for Justin for putting this group together. I'm totally grateful. I don't say it enough and probably nobody says it enough, but thank you very much for putting it together. I actually look forward to the call. Well, I look forward yeah, I look forward to it too. And thank you very much for saying that. You're very kind. Um, yeah, I have a lot of... Say what? I say, and I agree with that. <laughs> Who is this, Edward? Yes. yes. Hey, all right, Edward. Hey, thank you, dude. I appreciate you saying that too, and Kelly too. Kelly, Kelly, uh, Kelly over there the other day, he said something about me coming to his house for dinner sometime. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, I'll Don't smoke you a brisket or do something, man. <laughs> smoke brisket. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Well, uh, I'll probably have to bring the wife along because of smoke brisket now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. She's she's probably the better half of that relationship, so I'm I'm good with that. Oh one. yeah. She's she's, <laughs> she's much more interesting than me. Much more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it'll it'll be it'll help things. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. I, I you know I do this because it's fun. I mean, I I think you know we people start a lot of things and they they give up on a lot of things. But the things that we stick with are things that we somehow find find entertaining or fun or something like that. And this is one of those for me. I love I love our VIP. I love our little group. Uh, and uh, I'm thankful for everybody that participates. So thank you guys for being a part of this. I have a I have a good time on our one on ones. I have a good time on this role play every week. And this is this is always a kind of a private thing, um, and I like that nature of it too. I, I do. So I I I kind of agree with you, Clint. That you know my my initial reaction is to never put it on YouTube too. But I I didn't make another video this week, so I need some content to upload. <laughs> you know, I was laughing when somebody said, "Are you going to put?" Uh, when someone said, "Are you going to put this live?" I was going to respond and say, 
there's nothing that Justin does anymore that he doesn't put live. He's going to outshine the Kardashians soon, <laughs> you know? And I, like I said, I tip my hat because, you know, anybody that puts themselves out, you know, you see what tends to happen to their net worth. There will be a group of people that gravitate around them and they will, they will say, Hey, look, I came out of my shell. I exposed myself warts and all, so to speak. And look where it's got me. So, you know, this is the reason why I come, as you notice, I wasn't coming on these videos. And then I said, I better get my ass on these videos. That's really, yeah. that's, that should be mandatory. Nobody really should be missing yeah. them. Dude. And you know what, man, I like you being on these videos. Um, I, I, I really do. I mean, you, you've got a great voice. One, I said that before <laughs> I posted that in the Facebook group, just, just kind of to be funny and to pick on you a little bit, but man, I, I chuckled. Voice. And, but not only the great, the radio voice, so to speak, you know, um, but, you know, which is kind of what, what we always called it before, but radio's dead now. It's all podcasts. So, you know, it's a great podcast voice. And, um, but not only that, but, you know, every good podcast type show or video podcast or what do they call them? I don't know. What's a video podcast called? Um, Podcast is audible, audio. Yeah, you're right. Audible. Webinar. What's the, what's the, is it? Well, a webinar a is usually training, right? So, yeah, there's a word for it. I just, you, well, know, you know, if you think of Joe Rogan, he calls it the Joe Rogan <laughs> podcast, right? Well, so, that's true. And I watched that on YouTube. Yeah. Everybody's so, watched Joe Rogan. Yeah. But you know, the thing about Joe Rogan's podcast and anybody else's is they always have at least one other guy that's kind of, bouncing the the conversation back and forth you know just you know one guy might be carrying it but another guy is just like oh that you know have you seen this and and yeah that's a great point blah blah and then you know the camera shifts back and and that moves things along man clint you were doing that for me the other day whether you knew it or not man and, that, and i i really enjoyed it it was great well, here's the thing, Justin. As you know, I'm, I'm full of questions. I don't go anywhere without questions prepared. Even this phone call, if there's a break and you say, somebody say something, you know, I won't miss a beat. I won't skip. I won't stutter. I'm ready with the questions. You know, anytime you say, wait a minute, there's a lull here. I'll just be prepared with a few extra questions because everybody, there's always people here to answer a question. So it's uh, the group. Oh, yeah. the, the group mindset is often better than one-on-one -on -one sometimes. You get different perspectives, and everybody knows a little bit. Everybody just learned something yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you, yeah, you can learn something from everybody, too. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. What's, uh, what's on the scale? What's on the agenda for tonight? Role play? Role play? Let's do it. You guys notice I'm just sitting here on a couch now. I'm just taking it all easy and everything. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. I thought maybe you were just relaxing for the night. Oh, I'm just relaxing, man. I'm just kicking back and and taking it easy and uh, getting ready to do this role play. <laughs> I love it, man. Uh, I By thought, the way, you know, wouldn't it be sorry. nice if I had like somewhere to sit besides this desk? <laughs> uh, let's get a couch, honey. Might as um, well. And <laughs> just out of interest, what's happening with Claude's? What's it called? The guts competition. That's this this coming Saturday. Oh, you know that's so funny, man. It it it's Monday. Uh, yeah, it's it's a private thing, so it's not open to the public. But or I'd share it with you guys. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a little competition uh, for the the gut salesman of the year. Uh, and man, I, I initially wasn't even gonna do it, and. I I thought, well, maybe I should just give it a shot. You know, you never know. We'll see what happens. And then I was sitting on the couch last night and I was thinking, I was watching TV and, you know, I kind of zoned out of the TV and was just lost in my own thoughts. And I was like, what would I even, how am I, it's, it's a presentation type sales thing. And uh, I was like, man, what would I even, what would I even pitch and how would I even do it? I don't even know. I, you know, forget about it. And then all of a sudden, like a lightning bolt, right? I get hit with this idea. Oh, I could do that. So I ended up staying up like almost all night long, <laughs> writing this presentation outline for the gut sales, uh, you know, competition, uh, salesman of the year award, which is called the maxi, by the way, it's like a 30 minute, uh, you know, my little three minute timer. Okay. Yeah. Like I've a, seen it on the desk. 
Yeah, it's like a 30-minute timer, and it's got a gold plate on it with your name and salesman of the year. It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> good, <laughs> and, good. But even if I don't win, it'll be fun, guys. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. But I'm kind of nervous, too, you know. It's, it's, but it's private. So, Claude – and now let me ask you, is Claude the only judge? Is that how it's working? No, it's, it's really um, – way less uh subjective or objective than that it's it's more like he passes out ballots to all of the private vip there and then they judge you and everyone has one vote <laughs> okay all right well so, it's all for fun anyway so it, it really I, is man you know uh, there's no <laughs> millions of dollars are not on the line, so people have a likelihood of being honest. Oh, well, no, no, but there is a trip in it to San Diego and a nice dinner and some stuff like that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, is that where you know, Claude's from? San Diego? Uh, no, Claude's from uh, well, Winter Park, Colorado, but he, he does uh, you know summer there and then he winters over in San Diego. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the, the story there. Gotcha. Okay. Absolutely. Well, who's role playing tonight? I appreciate you asking me about that and, and everybody's encouragement. It it is just for fun and it it's it's a uh, it's I, I'm kind of nervous, guys, but I'm excited too at the same time. So I'll let you know how it works out. Good. Who's, good. Who wants to who wants to role play tonight? I will be one of the role players tonight. Okay. All right. We got Clint doing one side. Who else wants to volunteer? I know uh, Ryad's on the call, but he's uh, he told me he's he's kind of still at work and so he's not going to be able to really participate, but he wanted to listen in. I said, great, man, listen in. That sounds good. So, uh, it looks like the, uh, mantle of responsibility tonight is falling upon Mr. Kelly or Mr. Edward. <laughs> uh, I nominate Edward. Well, I could try it. I mean, I don't have a problem trying it. Well, how about we, how about we start out with Clint being the, uh, the calling real estate investor, the, the gentleman that has the phone and he's dialing the seller and you could be, uh, Edward, you could be the homeowner at least initially. And, uh, and, and that way we get, get started like that. And so the, the pressure's off you for uh, at least three minutes. <laughs> That's great. You get a three-minute reprieve. Okay, there now. we go. So for, step, <laughs> for stepping up, the pressure's being applied right to me. I like it. Here's one thing I will say. I've been trying to watch out for word whispers. I think everybody knows what a word whisper is, but if you don't, it's when you say, ah, uh, um, Oh, yeah, definitely. We all do it, and I'm trying to make a conscientious effort not to do it. And I hear everybody else do it. Yeah. And I wonder if everybody else is trying to watch themselves or prevent it, or they're just kind of flying by the seat of their pants. But I'm going to be doing my very best not to – not to use word whispers. And then, of course, I'll be listening to this on YouTube or wherever uh, you upload it to. And I'll be, I'll be listening for the word whispers. So uh, it's just one why, of the many things. Uh, that's what makes you so great, man, uh, in your podcast voice. It, you know, I just, I, did it's you the notice first time I, I heard did that. It? Did it's you notice like, I just did it uh, in your podcast voice? <laughs> I, think, I think everybody do that, though. I think that's part of, that's part of talking, I guess. Um, no, but – I agree with you, Edward, but I do I do agree with Clint. You know, I've I've been in the room with fellas that couldn't get through a conversation without saying it 157 times, and that was really kind of annoying, especially when they get nervous and they're on the phone. But you're right, everybody does do it. But if you're you know, don't wear it out, right? <laughs> you know, they like just just from all the learning I've done, they say that when you're on the phone, you're supposed to be the authority figure. Each time you use the word ah or um, you become less of an authority figure. So having, but having said that, the moment you quote a price or the person quotes a price to you, it sometimes is a good time to just say, uh, you know, that is where you have to cringe and use it through a few, excuse me, word whispers just to throw in there for stage presence. I really believe that I've seen some of the experts do this and that's really the only time they do it because yeah. you've got to, it's almost like a verbal flinch. You know, when someone, when someone wants three times what you want to offer them, you've got to flinch. And sometimes you've got to show it in your facial expressions. Sometimes you've got to show it through your voice, sometimes both. But outside of that, for the majority of the conversation, we're told to ask a lot of questions and we're told in in all in public speaking and in sales 
if you can minimize your word whispers, sales will go up, conversion will go up, authority will go up. That's a great, that's, that's great. Yeah, I, 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 I can agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. <laughs> I just did it again. You know, the, that's, it's great. That I, I do think about things like this, especially making video content, because that really, every time you do that, you can definitely tell people that, hey, I don't know what I'm going to say next. I'm thinking what my response needs to be. And uh, that's, I think that's what causes the confidence drop that you're referring to. If you're, if you're using that a lot, you know, it's like, does this guy know what he's talking about? He's bumbling ass through this thing. <laughs> and he's saying, uh, every three words. So, oh, honest to goodness. If you listen to Anthony Robbins, count, them, count how many word whispers there are. You can stop right at zero. Yeah. Zero. So he, yeah. there are no word whispers. Now, and forget Anthony Robbins. Just use someone like that other guy that nobody's heard of, Donald Trump. You don't hear him using word whispers either. You don't hear Donald yeah. Trump with no words, period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, that's a good thing. I'm glad you brought that up. That's that's kind of a polishing of the conversation skills. I do agree with what you're saying, too, that sometimes the uh and the, and the waiting and the pause and the reflection is a, the, a kind of a piece of that thespian quality of sales. <laughs> the ver the, I call it the verbal uh, flinch. I just came up with that right now. Somebody out there is like, what, what did he say? The lesbian part of sales? <laughs> no, the, the thespian. No, I think the, we, we the, before. <laughs> the acting part. <laughs> uh, there probably is a lesbian part somewhere. I just, I, but I'm talking about the thespian part. <laughs> the, the, the acting part. The part where you, you pause intentionally. You, you grimace intentionally because the price is too high or you... Or you act more concerned, or more laid back. It's all it's all a little bit of an acting game. But you know, every time we talk to somebody, we're doing a little bit of that, ain't we? We no do. Matter, no matter who it is, right? If we're at the bank, even or the you know, wherever. Where, what are you What are you doing over, there, Kelly? <laughs> what was that? I was gonna chime in about that uh, lesbian thing and the low hanging fruit up. Uh, just yeah. that's, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, like you said earlier, let's keep it clean. <laughs> I'm trying to, we're trying to keep it PG here, guys. But there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with what we're talking about here. Nothing at no. all. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's start this role play before we just end up over at the bar having a beer or something okay, okay so i'm okay. going on with edward and edward is the potential seller is that the case edward are you the uh, seller i i mean yeah i could be the seller that's fine i mean we got to go both ways you gotta remember i'm wrong because i never did this before i ain't even never talked to a seller yet so it's gonna be good for me to learn so Okay. Yeah, well, well, you, you know what? It's, it's actually it's it's easier to be the seller, as you know. You just kind of wing it. There's no problem at all. The pressure's on me. I've I'll tell you exactly how many times I've done this. Zero. So this will be the first time. So we awesome. got two. We got two solo. Yeah, two solo flights taking off right now. Uh, I want you to be, I want you to be as realistic as you can, Edward. Be, okay. Be, be tough on him, but don't don't crush him. Okay. <laughs> But at the same time, don't give it away. All right, don't give it away. But but don't crush him either. Just just you know, let's. I'm 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 gonna act like I'm selling my house now. Yeah, just be yeah. We're no, yeah perfect normal. Just be normal. We're we're solo flight. We don't need too much turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go, Edward. Ring 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 ring. Hello. Yeah, hi. I'm looking for Edward. Is this Edward? Yeah, this is Edward. How you doing today? Hey, I'm great. This is Clint. I'm just calling about a property you had for sale. You left a message on my voicemail. We sent a postcard mentioning that we buy houses, and I just wanted to let, just want to check with you to have five, a quick five minutes, so I can ask you a few questions about your house. Oh, okay. So, uh, which property are you are you speaking about? I got a couple. I'm speaking about the one on 69 Toad Road West. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, great. That's one of my favorite street acts. I have some friends that used to live on Toad Road. So, Edward, let me just tell you, 
what most homeowners want to know from us is they want to know what our process looks like. They want to know how much we can pay for their house. And they also want to know how much or how long they can actually stay in their home. So now, obviously, for me to answer these questions for you, I'm going to actually need to ask some questions from you as well. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, great. Well, our process is really simple. I'm a real estate investor who buys houses along with a few other uh, partners. And we're looking to buy about two to three properties in the next 45 days in your neighborhood. Now, with that said, we certainly don't buy every house we look at. So I'm going to ask you just a few more. I'm going to start by asking you just a few questions about your property and we can go from there. And that's where I get mixed up. So let me just get the spelling of your last name, if that's okay. Uh, Porter, like the car Porter, P-O-R-T-E-R. Okay, great. So, and I just want to get your cell phone number because I'm not sure if I'm looking at your landline or your cell number right now. Okay, it's probably my cell number, 708-224-5569. Okay, great. And Edward, can you just tell me how many other people are on the lease of your house, if you don't mind? Just me. I own it free and clear, so. Just you. You're the full boss, just as I expected. Okay. So, how many bedrooms are there in your house? Three bedrooms, one and a half bath. Gotcha. Okay. And can you tell me when the last time, if you can remember, the roof was, was repaired? Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I had the roof repaired about, about 10 years ago. Okay, great. And to the best of your knowledge, are there any foundation issues like sticking doors or cracks in the walls? Not that I know of. I, I recently had the basement waterproof so it wouldn't be leaking because we're okay. in an area that really floods a lot. So, Right, okay. And in your opinion, if I were to take over your house, will we have to replace any windows or doors, to, in your opinion? Um, I wouldn't think so. Um, they seem to be pretty durable, but um, it's, it's, I mean, it's all up to you. I wouldn't if I had it. Right. Okay. Well, you do have it. You still have it. It's yours. You're the you're the boss in charge, which is great. I mean, if I if, if I had to buy, if I was buying a new and I had to replace them, I think I would go in and replace them. But gotcha. they, they, I mean, they the original windows that was in the build in the building when we bought it. So. Okay. Great. So let me just ask you this: on a scale from one to ten, with ten being perfect condition and one being at the very bottom, how would you rate your house's interior condition right now? I would give it about an eight. An eight? Wow. That's fantastic. Let me ask you, Edward. This house, it really sounds fantastic. Please share with me. What's the reason you actually want to sell your property? Well, actually, like I was telling you when we first started, I got a couple of properties. I was actually invested in property myself. Um, some things came up. My wife, she got sick, and um, we was thinking about moving out, moving to a more, a more warmer climate. And... And I figured it's time for me to just let it go. I, I, I recently had it rented out for about two years. The tenant I had in it, he was paying pretty good, but he had to move. And I put another tenant in it, and that tenant wasn't paying right. So I got kind of got frustrated with renting, so I decided to go ahead and see if I could sell it. Okay. And just so I know, are there tenants in your property right now, or is it totally vacant? No, it's totally vacant right now. Totally vacant. How long has it been vacant for? About, about a month and a half. A month and a half. Okay. So no major... No major troubles there. Hopefully, you uh, if you don't sell it, let me ask you, if you can't sell it, what do you think you're going to do? Do you think you'll just continue to rent it out, or would you actually possibly move in there yourself? Um, I, I think I'd sell it. It's going to sell. It will. Okay. Well, that's a different story. Gotcha. Okay. I, I'm, I'm moving in myself because, like I told you, I plan on moving out. Uh, I would prefer to sell it and get rid of it. I would prefer to get get cash and get out from under it completely. But if I if I had to to make the move, I would probably rent it out. I guess. Right. Okay. So you probably know the area pretty well. Uh, just I'm not sure if you already told me, but can you tell me how long you've you've owned the property, Edward? I've owned it about seven years. Seven years. Okay. Great. And so, Edward, you know when you go to a car dealership. You know, when you walk and you see those cars all lined up at the car dealership, they always have a price tag on the windshield of every car. And I always believe they do that for one reason. It's so that when the person shows up at the car lot, they'll know what they're potentially buying. So with that in mind, roughly just give me a ballpark and I'm not going to hold you to it. 
what do you think you might, what do you think the property's worth in its current condition? Um, uh, in its current condition, I think it's worth about maybe 110. 110, wow. Okay, let me, let me ask you, how did you come up with that figure? Actually, the, I, I did some research and, and did a, a, a analyzation of what the property in the area was going for, and my property was going for 110. It was actually lower than the other property in the area. The other property was going for like 130, 140. So I figured I could still get about 110 for it. 110, gotcha. Okay, great. So now uh, here, here's the next question I just wanted to ask. This It sounds like a great property. Probably, obviously, you know, to get the most amount of money, the obvious, uh, the obvious option would be to list it with a realtor. So have you, have you listed it with a realtor in the last two years? No, I haven't listed it. Not listed. Okay. And what's I listed it myself and see if, you know, actually I didn't want to list it because if I figured if I listed, I would lose out because I would have to pay commissions and, not, and all this other junk and, and I would have to go through so much. So I was trying to actually do what for sale by owner, trying to sell it myself. Right. Okay. And just out of interest, is there any rush or can this be stretched out over one year to two year or you're looking to get out in the next 30, 60 days? What's, what's really your well, time? I would, I, would prefer, I, would prefer to sell, I would prefer to sell it cash. And, and 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 get out as soon as possible. But like you say, if I can't sell it, I'm pretty sure I will. I would probably probably take a take a, a, a term on it for a while. What's a t when you but say you take a term? Does that mean put tenants back in it? Well, I mean that's all depends on what you had in mind. Gotcha. Okay. I, I could probably do. I could probably go with what you. I can listen to you. you can go. It all depends. Gotcha. Okay. So, gang, that's all I have right now. <laughs> So it's like that's that free. Okay, that's awesome, man. Um, what we didn't do is we didn't tell George that I'm sorry. We didn't tell Edward that Clint is primarily prospecting for ugly house business. That's <laughs> we true. Did, we did not tell him that, so that made it even more like realistic. And uh, I thought that call was great and. Edward, I thought you did a superb job being the homeowner, and I think it worked out well. Um, where where would you where would you have gone, Clint, in a perfect world with Edward? At the end of that, how would that have gone perfectly? You know, he's definitely not in a rush, and so this is something that we always need to look for. One of the questions I would have asked. I would have had to ask. I mean, I, I haven't perfected it. I, I, that little spin on the car lot, I invented that. So I didn't actually hear that anywhere. Obviously, as you could tell, it was not polished. It didn't come out the way I wanted. I tried my best. This was, oh, that was pretty good, though. That was pretty good, Clint. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll if, tell you, you. if you had to me, I think you could have – I, I kind of screwed up because you asked me how long I had the roof replaced. I said 10 years. You asked me how long I owned it. I said seven. So that was not right. <laughs> I thought you did great. Really, I thought you did great. I was, you know, I didn't when even we notice. Yeah, neither did I actually. Did. In fact, I'm guilty of just thinking what I'm going to say next. And I really right. was, I really was not writing things down, which uh, in a normal case, yeah. to tell you the truth, I won't be writing things down. I'm going to be recording all these phone calls. I just don't want to be distracted by writing. But to answer your question, Justin, I would have definitely needed to find out how much equity is in the property. And for all I know, Edward, you could turn around and say, Clint, I already told you. And I'd believe you because I just was kind of working on what I was going to say next rather than focusing specifically on what you were saying. Yes. Well, I guess I was confused. You asked me what I was, what was the price I was asking for it. Wouldn't it have been listed in the listing? Well, actually, in the way I took the call was as though you received a postcard. You called me up, left a message on my voicemail, and I was just returning the call. <laughs> so there was information would be, that would have been good ten minutes ago. <laughs> I think, you know, I, I totally forgot about. It. I mean, uh, Justin caught me by surprise, saying, "Thank you for nominating uh, yourself, Clint. You get to be the you get to be the uh, buyer." So I was I, flying by the I, seat I, of my pants. I forgot too, man. But hey, in a way, it was better because it was more realistic. I, I like right. it. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was great, though. I liked it. Then. You both did fun. a super good job. Let me let me critique you, Clint, and okay. uh, and I'll critique you with a story of something that happened to me this week. 
I was on a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with a student, and he had a lead he wanted me to call. So I said, okay, let's three-way call this lead. I'll do the talking. You can listen, and I'll, I'll deal with the homeowner directly myself. And so I dialed the phone and I got on the, the, the guy answered the phone and I, I set the agenda for the call. I went through my qualification questions and I found out the situation and the guy was eating out of my hand. The guy was saying, yes, 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 I'll do this. This sounds wonderful. I'm ready to go. Can we do something right away and blah, blah. And I was like, all right, we got ourselves a deal. And then he asked me a question and it was a simple question and i gave the answer I, i'm trying to recall what it was exactly but it was such a small minute question but i answered it with such a polished answer that his motivation went from 10 down to seven and then he asked me another question and i answered it with such a polished remark that then he acted like I was a scammer. And I said, sir, do you, are you, are you acting, you feel like I'm a scammer or something? It feels like maybe now. He said, well, I mean, you are calling from a different city. I said, well, yeah, I live in Kansas city. I said, okay. Well, and then he goes down to like three on a scale of one to 10. And I wow. got to thinking I, and, and I got off the phone and I told the coaching student, I said, hey, no problem. Call this guy back in a day or two. You'll get the deal. I said, it's just, it's just that he didn't like me, okay? Something happened in my, in my method of communication was too polished, okay? I've practiced this so much recently that I started spitting it off, like, really, you know, too easily even and too sales. It came across salesy. Okay. And, and because it came across salesy, uh, that guy got scared and apprehensive and like, oh, this guy might be a scammer, blah, blah. Okay. And so I, I took a step back and analyzed myself and I said, okay, part of what I did wrong. Because remember, the guy was like, yes, 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 give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> and, and, uh, then, and then I just completely, like, like in that movie, Tommy Boy, I, you know, I got my little sale. And, ah, <laughs> Which is a great know. movie. <laughs> right. I've broken my sale. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what happened to me. And, and I think after analyzing it, yeah, I love the guy. It's too bad he's gone. Bless his heart. I think I was just too polished. I think I was just a little too smooth. And I came off a little bit too telemarketer -y. And, uh, so my critique of you is, is because you have such a great voice, because, you know, you're so good with the words, you might be conscious of the fact that you're so good that they misread you. You, you, you see where I'm coming from? It could happen. It, it could, could very it well could happen. happen. I'm not saying don't get better. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, be cognizant of the idea that I think at least in the States, I don't know. It might be slightly different where you are, but here they're very, uh, very apprehensive. It seems at times. Okay, sure. But I would rate my I would rate myself a one out of ten on that call. That like, well, and I no. wasn't exaggerating. That was the very first no. call I've ever done. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Okay, so really, my critique, if I could sum it up in a sentence, is this: is I thought you did so well that it might have been too good <laughs> okay <laughs> you know what i mean like just be just you know make it more you know like like humans talking um because you were very programmed and that's also because you were saying you were thinking of what you're going to say next and but it came out very smooth dude you ought to be very proud of that very smooth very good i followed where you were going with things too i knew i could see the I could see the organization of thought and whether you were carrying the conversation. So all that was very good and strong. And uh, I could even break it up into sections. Uh, so, you know, in the three parts, and that's great. And I could also, I picked up that you're going for Ugly House. So, you know, a lot of strong things happen in there, but, but maybe even too good in some respects, if you, if you, if you catch my drift. I certainly do, and I appreciate the criticism. In fact, I, I look for criticism. I'm my own worst critic, but there's always going to be things that others catch that we will never catch of ourselves. So, And that's a pretty doggone complimentary criticism. <laughs> it was very flattering. I'm, I'm blushing over here. I better turn down the lights. Well, 
are you ready to do the 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 seller uh, call, Mr. Edward? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to do it. I can do it. But uh, like I said, you know, it's it, to me, I can understand Clint. To me, I think Clint did a good job. I do too. Because uh, I get so nervous, you know. I like I say, I don't. I'm not. I'm not really a quick learner, and I don't. I don't pick up on a lot of things. It got to the point sometime this week, man, because you know I did my scraping that I was telling you about. I got about about twelve replies. Like I think I got one maybe, and the rest was no. And the other one say, well, which properties like that? And I wanted to call him, but I'm you know I get nervous. And I I'm telling my wife, I say, you know what? I don't think this is really for me. <laughs> she said, you're not giving up already, are you? <laughs> Edward, I'll call you. Tw you know, seven nights in a row, we'll do 20 minutes of role play. I'll be here. I promise. I need all the practice in the world. And I re listen, I listen to all the experts. And then when I hear them live, they don't sound like they do the way they talk. It's very different. Like when you're, when the camera's on you, you act different. And I didn't feel it's, I'm laughing when Justin says I sound polished because it did not feel polished at all. It felt like a rough, untarnished stone. But, you know, like you said, Justin, that's the way it's coming out. Well, that's part of your personality, okay? And also, it's that you, I can tell you really put a lot of time in developing this, this pitch. <laughs> you know but I've never, read, I've never read it out loud. Are you serious? I've, really? never, I've never read it out loud. I've wow. never said it to anyone. I just had a few bullet points, and they're not in any specific order. Wow. Well, you got some natural gifts and skills then, sir. So, good. good. <laughs> He's a natural <laughs> He's a natural. Yeah, he's a natural. That's was that wasn't that a book or a movie or something? There was a book. <laughs> there was a movie called. Wasn't it called The Natural? I forget. Who was the thespian in that one? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you say? Who's the lesbian in that one? <laughs> I don't know if you got it before the call. I I got thrown off a little bit right off the bat without realizing it. Edward, you say, listen, I go both ways. And I said, I'm just not gonna make a, I'm not gonna make a comment. <laughs> yeah. The VIP room is don't ask, don't tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is no sex in the VIP room. Okay, that's the rule. <laughs> uh, okay. That was I took it too far. Uh, all apologies. Let, let's jump right back into this next role play. <laughs> Uh, all right, Edward, dial the phone and give him a call whenever you're ready, man. Is Edward now? Is Edward calling me or is he calling somebody else? Or does Kelly want to jump well, in there? Kelly, do you want to jump in and be the, the homeowner? That's the easy part, man. Sure. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll do it as long as he doesn't go both ways. I'm good with it. <laughs> that was hilarious, man. Uh, I go, I go both ways. I'll do an ugly house deal or a pretty house deal. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> well, we got that on the table. We're good. Uh, you yeah. you love it because I don't do no deals. <laughs> <laughs> He's practically a nun. Right. <laughs> in fact, in fact, what he's saying is, is he don't get none. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what we're here practicing. We're trying to change that, man. So, uh, <laughs> ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello. Yep. Hello. Hello. Yeah, is, this, is this Kelly? Yes, it is. Hi, Kelly. My name is Edward. Hi, Edward. Uh, I'm a real estate investor looking to buy some property in your area in the next 24 to 36 months and wondering, would you be interested in selling it? Um, yeah, yeah, I uh, got your postcard the other day. Yeah, I, I, or I think it's yours. It, it was from ABC Home Buyers. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. That's me. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so um, actually, I want to ask you a few questions about the property. Maybe I can ask you some questions. You can ask me some questions, and maybe we can get an understanding on where we're going. And at any time of the questioning that you you're not comfortable, just you can tell me. No, I'm a big boy. I can take it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds fair. Hey guys. That was perfect. Okay. He did a super good job. Um, the only thing I would say that you could have done differently, Edward, in setting the agenda was when you said, um, you know, looking to buy a property in 24 to 36 months, I would say I'm, I'm in a, I'm in kind of in a hurry to do something and I'd like to buy a property today. Are you guys looking to sell? Okay. You see what I mean? It puts more urgency in it a little bit. Um, 
that way I later agree. on, you know, that way later on you can you can push the tempo a little bit if you need to. Because you already told him he's in a hurry. Hey, but super good job. I would give you an A minus on that agenda. No, I give myself a C. <laughs> no, you're crazy for doing that, man. That was an A minus job all the way, at least. At I agree. Least. Yeah, yeah. And Kelly agrees. I mean, I think you nailed it. All right, let's continue on. Sorry, sorry. I'll try not to interrupt. So. <laughs> okay, I don't forget why I was it. <laughs> I, I, that's why I'm going to try not to interrupt. Sorry. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit about the property? Uh, well, it's a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. Um, I think it was built in the seventies. I'm not real sure. It's it's in pretty decent shape. It's got a nice lawn and a shed out back, and uh, yeah, it's you know it's not not in perfect shape, but uh, you know it, it's comfortable for what what we needed. So. Okay, so how long how long have you had? How long have you owned it? Uh, we've lived here for about five years. Okay, five years. Do, do it need any major repairs that you know of? Uh, well, not really, other than the fact that uh, we had a hailstorm here a couple of years ago, and uh, we got the insurance check for it. But uh, to be honest, we, we spent that on some other stuff because we had a high deductible, so... Uh, it, it could probably use a roof. It doesn't leak, but uh, we did get some insurance money, but we didn't have it fixed. Oh, it looks like a pretty good property from what I've seen online. Um, based on what you're selling, it, why are you selling it? Well, my wife got a, a job out of state, and uh, we thought about keeping it as a rental, but she doesn't really want to mess with it. She wants uh, all of us, uh, me and my family or my kids, to move up. Uh, where her job is and uh, so we think we're just tossing it out there see what we can uh, see if we can make it work and if it makes sense to us we'll are you looking to sell, are you looking to sell it right away yeah probably like within the next 30 days because uh, she starts her job in the next two weeks so uh, uh, we'd kind of like to you know move and and if she doesn't want us to rent it she's worried about people trash in the place so uh, uh he really wants to sell it i'd kind of like to rent it but uh yeah pretty soon i, I would say within the next 30 days ba uh, based on based on the uh the price i've seen online are you flexible with selling with the, the price or are you are, are you looking to, to rent it out long term or something like that well see my, my wife just really I, I wouldn't mind doing that because I, I know the house would probably appreciate over time but uh, she doesn't want to mess with it she's just so worried that somebody's going to come in and do bad things to it I, I guess her aunt had a, an issue with uh, somebody kind of messing with uh, her property so I think we'd rather have cash but uh, you know I don't know anything's negotiable I guess uh, I could talk to her well, the, the cash the, the cash is a lot more than I'm looking to, to spend as an investor. Uh, I may be able to I may be able to pay the cash price if you're willing to do a 24 to 36 month lit, uh, a rent. Oh, okay. Well, I don't I don't know how that works, but uh, I, I'm you know I'm listening. I'm interested because I'd like to you know be able to float a few things by her uh, to see if we can work something out. Because. Mm -hmm. Her, her and I are on kind of two different pa pages, you know. She wants the cash. I wouldn't mind renting it for a while. So, yeah, t tell me more about your program or whatever you got in mind. Well, um, with my program, I was thinking about maybe I can probably take it off your hands and rent it. I get a tenant buyer that I can put in, and they, they can probably pay the, the, the price that you're looking for in about 36 months. And at the, at the same time, I can look for a, a cash buyer to, pay, to cash it out. Oh, okay. So who, who takes care of the repairs and stuff? Uh, am I going to be on the hook for, you know, if, if so are they going to call me in the middle of the night if, if the toilet overflows? Oh, no. or, or? You, you'll be off, you'll be, you'll be completely off the hook for repairs. You just, all you would do is wait on a check every month until the, the, the final payout is paid off. I take care of all the repairs. You'll be on the hook for the taxes. How about the insurance? No, the insurance will be paid through me. Through you? Right. Okay. All right. 
So, uh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's, that sounds like something I'd be interested in. I, you know, I got to make sure I can sell my life on it, but, uh, but you say I could get full price or, or something like that within how long, 24, 36 months, something like that. I would say about 36 months. Okay. All right. And then, so who, who, uh, who does the uh, uh, day to day? Who do I get the check from you, or or do they send me a check, or how do I get paid? Because I still have a mortgage on it. Right, you will you will get paid directly from me. I'll make you a check out every month for the the, uh, the rent, and then at the end of the the term, I will go and get a. a, a um, I'm confused now. <laughs> I would go and get I would go and get the, the the final payment and pay you out, and you would be completely out of the way then. Okay, in twenty four to thirty six months, huh? Right. Oh, okay. Well, that that sounds a, a lot better. I, I was a little skeptical. I, I could draw up a I could draw up a contract, and I would I would probably get an email from you, and I will send it to you, and then you can look it over. If you want to go from there, we go like that. Oh, that'd be good because I'd really like to show my wife a piece of paper or something, you know, to, to try and get her on board. You know, she's she's pretty skeptical, more so than me. So. So is this the only property you own, or do you have another piece? Uh, I've got my grandmother's home that, that got willed to me, um, and we we have that. We have a renter in there, but it's in another town. So. Okay, so you used to rent. Uh, yeah, well, just that one house. I'm not a, I'm not an investor or anything, but I just uh, we have that one house, and since it was grandma's house, we didn't want to get rid of it. But now that we're moving. Uh, you know, we might consider getting rid of that just so we don't have to mess with it because we're moving like three states away. So, okay. So, well, let's do this. Why don't you, why don't you give me your, your uh, email address and a phone number? I'll shoot you the contract and then you look over the contract and I give you a call back maybe tomorrow and then we can go from there. Okay. Are you, would you be interested in buying both houses? Would I consider buying both houses? Sure will. I'm sorry, Edward, I couldn't hear you. Well, maybe do a package deal where I could do both of them, then I could pay cash all at once for both. Oh. Oh wow, that might even be better. I think my wife might like that a little better. <laughs> cool. There's my email address. All right. Okay. All right, great. And nice way to follow that all up with uh, asking about more properties too, Edward. That was a great job on that. Um good job. Good job, guys. Um uh, I think you got an A minus on the agenda. I would give you a, I'd give you a, a B minus on the qualification section. Okay. And and all you need to do there is kind of like, just get just get more smooth and confident with it. Um, right. And and kind of like where in such a way that you can lead the conversation with those questions, which you were doing. <clears throat> um. But I could tell that, you know, this was your solo flight. So, um, mm -hmm. but e excellent job for a solo flight. Uh, but I'll give you a B minus there. And on the closing section, I would give you, it, because you went for it. You went for it. And you <laughs> asked the questions. And I would definitely give you a B there. So, um, room for improvement, but overall, a pretty good solo flight everything went swimmingly so okay. uh yeah so it's now it's just all about repetition of practice um you know doing things over and over <laughs> till till you get kind of in a flow with it and yeah i was the, nervous yeah. too i, you know, I, I oh, even stuttered yeah. oh well <laughs> i didn't i didn't notice <laughs> Yeah, maybe I, if me and Clint do role play a couple of times during the week, maybe next week we'll be better. Uh, you know, I think it was really, really good for the, especially for a solo flight, and you know, the first time out of the box. And I think it's, it, it you know, it, it's all, it's all just about practice from here on out. Actually, right. through the first half of the qualification section, so th this is the the conversation was halfway over. You know what I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking, man, why is this guy not talking to sellers? Because he's pretty good. I agree. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, you know, you do it a half a dozen times and you'll, you'll be where you want to be with that. I mean, you're not that far away. 
as a seller, I, I only saw him hard stumble once, or it, that's all I picked up on. Other than that, I mean, you know, you're you're the one to, to critique him, but uh, you know, as far as being on the listening end of it, I, I he just had that one little stumble there, and I thought I thought you did good, Edward. I, I was comfortable with you on the phone. I've never met you. I, I thought it was good, but obviously, you know, Justin knows better. <laughs> Oh no, it was good. Absolutely, that's 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 what I'm trying to 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 express here. It was very good, and and uh, I thought uh, on the flip side, you did you did very good too uh, with that whole that whole uh, seller side, uh, Kelly. And so you know you weren't too too rough on him, but you didn't give it away neither. And I like though that the entire conversation ended up with Edward asking about more business. And then when more business was found, <laughs> he made an offer on both. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I like his deal. He put the, the, he says, well, if I could buy them in a package, you know, you know, maybe I could pay all cash. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that piqued my interest, you know, even mm-hmm. better. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. So superb job. I, I don't know where you picked that trick up, Edward, but that's that's great, I, man. I in my head all at once. I just thought about it. So. <laughs> well, well, you better write that down before you let it get away, man, because that's a good one. I, I, was, <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking that he was going to curse me out. Like he said he didn't want nobody to curse him out. <laughs> Hang up on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Well, Edward, uh, were you looking at bullet points when you did that, or was it just straight out of your head? Just straight out of my head. Based on what I heard uh, – uh, Justin talked when, when he did his role play. You know, during the week, I kind of listened to what Justin said, and then I go back to YouTube and listen to uh, Claude's, Claude's uh, seminar sometime. Okay. I up on him like that. Gotcha. Good. Wow. For no bullet points, that sounds, I'm going to, I'm marking you two points higher already. Just, no, you know, I, you. Thought, I, I thought you'd at least have <laughs> bullet points. I was using bullet points. You, you know, know, it's kind of funny. You know, I've been I've been dabbing in real estate off and on. You know, the, the wholesaling, the ugly houses, and stuff like that. For the last, you know, I was I was actually a CTA operator. So you know, when people get on the bus and I just talk about housing and stuff. But after I retired, I got into it. That's why I got into it now. And now I'm really getting into it. I need to I need to write down the bullet points, like you said, and start studying more. Yeah, the reason why, you know, I, I haven't heard it being said too much in these conversations but everybody's heard the example when the guy goes into the bar he can't meet the girl and say do you want to come home with me there's always a sequence right he has to ask her her first name then he has to ask her what she likes what's her sign what's her zodiac sign right Mm -hmm. that that's the best way to break the ice with just about every girl i think it's ridiculous these zodiac signs but as every guy know knows every girl pays attention to their zodiac sign so if you want to get good but anyways the point is that when you have the bullet point <laughs> you'll be able to kind of follow a sequence and i was getting moving along that direction but i really didn't have enough bullet points so i sort of got lost in my presentation but ultimately when i do get on the phone which will be shortly with live calls there'll be a sequence and it would be a logical progression and one of the here's something i just want to put this out there the question about why you're selling is never shouldn't be in the first four or five questions every every guy that i've heard that like does nothing but train they don't ask that question the first four or five because that's where the person always is playing it tight to their vest you haven't dealt you haven't built any rapport in the first four or five questions so they say the best way to be, uh, develop rapport is by asking questions about the house because that's very nonchalant the person's very willing to tell you all about their house they're going to lie a little bit, but you ask uh, pointed questions like, what's your mortgage? What do you think your property's worth? These are the questions that are going to get people, the hairs on their back to stand up. So you need to develop a little bit of, you need to yeah, develop a little bit of rapport before asking these right. questions. So this is what I'll be working on in my presentation. And I just thought I'd put it out there because sometimes I've heard people ask that in the third question. You know, uh, what are you looking for? What are you looking to get for your house? And you, there's no rapport being built. Yeah. So, yeah. Just a thought. Exactly. Yeah. That, it, it's a lot about likability and, and not just likability, but um, the ability to communicate too, you know, and, and make people feel comfortable. Comfortable is such an important word. 
Um, I know I look really comfortable. Is. I look comfortable right now, and I am. Yeah. Your voice sounds laid back. It's <laughs> a real advantage because yeah. you sound you sound relaxed and laid back. You don't hey, sound like you're going to yell ever. Oh hey, no, no. Of course. Hopefully not. <laughs> I, I actually, actually, I get I get on, on my email. I get um, I got a guy who works with Keller Wheels. He's sending me lists of properties and stuff. And he 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 pushed me off to somebody else. They send me lists of properties. Now they, the lists of properties I get. If I want to make an offer on them, the only person I can contact is the agent. How do I? How do you deal with deal with that? Uh, when you're when you're prospecting for property deals and you see a property deal that you think you're interested in, and there's a realtor in the way. Right. So how do you you, you, know, you can't talk to the, you can't talk to the uh, the owner himself. You got to go through the agent, through the, the realtor agent, I guess. Well, I mean. Uh, I, with a lady today, and I, I said, I told her, I said, would she be interested? Would he be interested in renting it for twenty years? Must she say, well, you probably have to go to the rental section, and that was it. She wouldn't talk to me. Okay, so here's how that works: if if a realtor is involved with the seller, you can you can talk to the seller. The problem is, you'll have to tell the seller, hey, listen, here's what I can do, here's what I can offer. If that works for you and that feels comfortable comfortable for you. One issue that you may experience here that would prohibit you from being able to do this is you have a realtor and you've signed an exclusive agreement to pay them. Now that's your responsibility. You'll either have to cancel her or pay her or whatever, but that is that is that is on you. Okay. Well, how do you get the, how do you get the, the owner's name number and name? Because the only listing you got yeah. is the agent number. You would have to skip trace. Oh, okay. But now I have many times talked to the realtor, okay? So that's one method, but the other method is to just talk to the realtor and let the realtor know what your intentions are. And uh, many times if the realtor is trying to move this piece of property and has been unsuccessful with it for some time, they are also quite flexible. <laughs> so it's not a complete dead deal just because you see a realtor there. Now, do I prefer deals with realtors? Absolutely not. I prefer straight to owner, direct to, direct to seller. But, you know, sometimes you got to go through a realtor. If you're doing bank-owned wholesaling, which I, I do, then you always go through a realtor. And it, and it, and it works. It's okay. Um, it's just easier when there's less people involved. I, I seen you. I seen on yesterday. You was talking to a guy that was looking to, to buy some property in Henderson. You, as you know, me and my wife supposed to be moving to Henderson, Nevada next year. And so yeah. I was, I was, uh, I did a, I did a, 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 a scraping for Henderson, and and I only got like nine properties out of there. And I, you know, I even, yeah. I, I, I even went through my filters as well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the thing is, man, I just. We just had the, the automated REI support team look into doing uh, Henderson. And the reason why is because somebody else was complaining, too, that they were getting very poor results on the Zillow for sale by owner scrape. Turns out there's just not much there when it comes to single-family residences on Zillow in, in the Henderson. Okay. So um, you have to go to Craigslist and do a scrape. Now, when you go to Craigslist and run the data count, you come back with something like 1,400, okay? So they're just located in a different place. The Zillow scrape ain't, it's not too whippy on, on Henderson, but the Craigslist scraper is right on target. Oh, okay, that's good. I'm gonna do that. Check that out, brother. That's a tip, man. Hey, it pays to be VIP. That's right. <laughs> Membership has its privileges. That's right. That's right. So next week, what I want to do, if you guys, if the same crew can be on next week, of course, we've got about 25 people in the VIP, but uh, only, you know, half a dozen or so ever seem to have the ability to come to these particular sessions on this particular night and, and do role play. Some of them are at church and things like that, and I get that. Um, I certainly can't compete with the Lord. I just want you to remember right. that. <laughs> Lord, I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm just trying to move and flow with you a little bit here. Help me out. <laughs> uh, so anyway, if you guys are back next week, we'll do a uh, we'll do role play again, and then we'll turn up the heat a little bit. 
will make okay. it a little a little bit tougher. The difficulty level goes from novice to intermediate. From intermediate to advanced. Huh? Gotcha. We didn't adjusting. hear Kelly. We didn't hear Kelly. Did we have a? Uh, did Kelly want to go or no? You want to go at it, Kelly? Uh, go at what? Being the being the guy making the phone call. Oh well, actually, I had before. I don't mind, but uh, I had a, a question and a statement that because I didn't know if you're wrapping this up or what. But well, question. Go ahead. But my question is getting back to rapport. Um, if I was to call Clint, and 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 you just you, you just correct me, whatever you think, but building rapport, getting somebody to where you said something about, uh, you kind of sound telemarketish on that one call. That you had. <laughs> That's not exactly what I said. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well you, uh, you got to try to start, you got to start up some shit between me and Clint. Now it's going to be weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Kelly's right. You did use that word telemarketer. You did, it did, it, you did breathe uh, that one word. Uh, let me get a Kleenex now. Please forgive me. <laughs> it's, Please, it's all good. It's all good. Anyways, yeah, that's okay. There we go. Okay, so, so you were saying. If, if, if I, and, and this is a question of how much rapport do you build? If I call Clint and I say, hi, Clint, you know, hey, my name's Kelly. And, and uh, you know, you had this house post, well, whatever, you know, and I get into my, my agenda but do I go so far as to say, "Hey, I see you're in Canada. Are you, are you a, a hockey fan, or you know, do you hunt a lot? Or, hey, how's the weather up there? I bet it's cold. I mean, how how far do you go? Because and the reason why I say this, um, Justin, is because uh, one of your previous, you know, when we were doing the the one to ten motivation, yes, you kept quizzing us. You said, "Well, is this guy, you know, on a one to ten, is he a seven? Is he a three? Do you, and that kind of ties in with your, your whole, um, you don't want to sound too telemarketish, whatever. Do I ask him stuff like that? Obviously I can't see him, you know, I can't say, Oh, Hey, I see an airplane on your wall or I see a, a, a football on your desk there. How, how intimate for lack of better terms, do I get with him? You know, I mean, do I say, hey, yes. you know, hey, Clint, are you know, are you, are you a hunter? I mean, are, you know, what's your weather like up there? Yeah. You're in Canada, or, I mean, how far do you yeah. go before you get to the to the qualification level? I mean, do you yeah. just kind of break the ice, or okay, I'll shut up now. No, I, it's a good question, and I understand the question. I think, and uh, the answer to the question is there's a couple philosophies of thought on this. One is, oh, well, what? I'm sorry, Can a you couple, that? a couple. A couple different philosophies of thought on this particular question. The okay. Answer, there's a couple different answers, a couple different ways of looking at it. One is yes, build as much rapport as you can. Talk about the pictures of the kids on the wall, uh, you know, uh, whatever you can think of, the weather, uh, what hobbies do they have, what collections do they keep, you know, do they, what do they like to fish and hunt, all the things. Yeah, there's a philosophy of thought that says, yeah, spend the first 30 minutes doing that. Okay, and then get into business. All right, uh, I do not personally like that philosophy because I have been doing sales in one form or another for over 20 years, and I'm tired. Okay, so I don't want to spend <laughs> I don't want to spend 30 minutes on the phone with anybody or in their home talking about the knickknacks in the curio cabinet and uh the the picture of the little rug rats on the wall and uh <laughs> ma mama's afghan that she crocheted by hand when you know with one hand tied behind her back okay i i don't care about all that stuff and and so that's the other philosophy is just get right down to business and make it happen and that's kind of what i like so i don't try to build too much rapport I do build rapport, however, and, and you'll notice that I do build rapport, but I do it almost instantaneously, and it's through my ability to sound like a human being, okay? So when I get on the phone with a homeowner, most of the time, they do not want me to build rapport. When I'm calling seller leads, I promise you, most of them do not want me to build rapport. 
I have tried it. I will get on the phone. I'll say, hello, my name is Justin. Yeah, I'm calling about a property I saw on Zillow. It's 123 Apple Cart Way. Yep, have I got the right place? Sure. Oh, great. How are you doing today? Oh, well, I'm doing fine. Well, super. How's the weather over there? Uh, that's good. Okay, great. Um, well, it's, uh, you got any hobbies or anything you like to do, or uh, are you just uh, looking to sell houses all day long? Um, well, I do have a house for sale. How can I help you? Okay, so the, you know, I get shut down a lot when I'm trying to just be the chummy buddy guy. No. Uh, and, and, but when I cut right to the business and they know that I'm serious about solving an issue that they have in their minds, which is a property they want to get rid of in some form or fashion, I establish that right off the bat with that agenda. But then after that, many times I have opportunities that pop up in the conversation for me to bond. And then that's when I grab a hold of those situations and try to build rapport. So that's my methodology of doing it. Uh, I don't like I don't like the pattern. I used to sell insurance like a decade ago, or actually almost a decade and a half. <laughs> and I remember that was the mo of sales back then. You call somebody, you spend thirty minutes on the phone jabbing the jaw about this shit and that shit and everybody else's shit, and then next thing you know, you you break into the conversation. Hey, let me show you this policy about blah blah and whatever. You know, it's just it's it's bullshit, man. And it, and and it'll run you out of the business because you wear yourself out on the phone trying to be people's friends and buddies and build rapport. When in fact, they just want to know what's in it for me. I've got a house I'm trying to sell. Are you interested in buying it? And that's about the extent of it. Now, once you've established that, now the guard comes down a little bit. Oh, you do want to buy it? You guys have even seen that happen to me on calls that I've done on live videos where uh, the guy's like, uh, yeah, it happened like last week, I think. I said, hi, my name is Justin. I'm, you know, I'm a real estate investor looking, you know, I saw this house on Zillow, one, two, three, Apple Cart Way. Yeah, you want to buy it? You remember that guy? I do remember it. And yeah, you said, you, you jumped right back at him and said, I'm looking to buy or something like that. <laughs> it was yeah, funny. I, yeah, I said, yeah, I, I want to buy it. And, and um, as soon as I said that, did you notice in the conversation, the guy, the walls came down a little bit. Now some rapport can be established because, you know, we cut through the bullshit here, man. Hey, I'm not trying to wine and dine in 69. I'm just trying to find out if I can buy this house. <laughs> he's, trying to find, he's trying to find out if he can sell the house. You know, he's not trying to be wine and dined either. So um, it, it's, gotcha. I, it's two different philosophies, Kelly. Uh, I, oh, I, I, am, I get it. No, that makes sense because yeah. I, I just, I didn't want to be too, it, but that makes sense because I mean, like you said, you'll get burned out. You'll you'll try and you know put too much into it, and then you find out they either they're not motivated or they want way too damn much, or you know, yeah. No, I get that. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Nothing's worse than spending forty five minutes on the phone with a homeowner and hanging up and 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 having nothing to show for it. Right. You know? Yeah. No, that that makes sense. The statement I was going to make, and I just wanted to throw this out for the other guys, but when you uh, when you did that call, it was the last Saturday, uh, that live, live not a cold call, but your live call, and that guy said that, um, he said, well, hey, I'm, I'm Justin, I'm an inv investor, and blah, 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 and the guy said, oh, well, so am I. I was like, I'd have been okay, thank you, and I'd have hung. <laughs> I can't believe how you handled that. I thought that was awesome. I don't know who, whose call that was or lead that was, but I, to, just to be honest, I would have said, okay, thank you very much. And I would have, I would have hung up to be honest with you. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the kind of value you're bringing to this because there's no way I would have been on the phone with him. I'm like, well, crap, he's an investor too. There's no sense in me talking to him. That was awesome, man. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that, Kelly. I don't remember what that one was. I, I've, I've made so many calls lately, but, yeah. I used to be afraid when they'd say I'm a realtor. I used to be afraid when they say I'm a broker. Uh, I used to be afraid when they say I'm an attorney. I used to be afraid when they say, you know, uh, I'm an investor. Um, I used to be afraid, you know, no matter what. <laughs> and, but the fact of the matter is, is all of us 
probably have a common interest here and that's to see a real estate transaction happen. So there's no reason to be afraid of these people. It's, uh, you know, it, 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 I, I think I, I'm pretty sure the guy's name was Michael. It wasn't Batista, but another guy, I thought his, his name was Michael. And you said, you said, well, you can just tell him that your name is Justin Michael, whatever his last name was. Oh yeah. He, yeah. From, from Mike, Georgia. Michael, yeah. Michael, Michael G. Yeah. He's yeah. Gooley. Gooley or that, something. That was such an incredible call to me. I couldn't believe it. And, and, uh, you know, I, I hope that, I hope we hear some follow up on that, but that was awesome. I just got to tell you that, but well, anyway, I'm done. I'm going to pass, I'm going to pass the tip bucket. You guys can throw a couple bucks in there for me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> hey so what's uh uh anybody got any more questions or anything i have a quick question i have yeah, a quick question up? okay so here's where i'm a little bit confused i just I, I got two very fast questions just recently i was setting up my not call rail but ring central phone numbers and i'm going to be putting out bandit signs and sending out postcards as well and so i'm not going to be answering the phones or the plan is for the calls to go to a voicemail but what I'm wondering is, when I call the person back, is it fine that it's never going to say my company name? Because Ring Central for Canada is not allowed to provide me with my company name. They're allowed to do it for people that live in the States, just not for Canada. So I'm wondering what you do when people call your bandit sign. Are you calling back from a, a number that actually shows your company name? Um, I, I just have caller ID where I think I have it set up where it shows the, just the number. Gotcha. Okay. So they don't, they, so if they remembered calling now, are you calling back from the identical number that they called you from? Typically not. <laughs> Typically not. Oh no. boy. That's going to make yeah. it difficult to get them to pick up the phone. Well, you might be able to pull it off, uh, with the same line. I, okay. I, I'm just in the habit of using a different phone. So right. Like, okay. Uh, and I use a different phone it, intentionally because any of the return calls and conversations all come back in through that one line. So it helps me track my stuff. Right. But okay. You, you might, you might be more organized than me. <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. I'm just trying to get organized, but I got some bad news from ring central. They said, I, I really believe in this day and age, like people that are in their 70s, 75, 80, they are now unlike, I believe 10 years ago, they weren't doing this so much, but they're now looking at their phones and saying, I don't recognize the name. I don't recognize the number. Therefore I don't pick up the phone. They didn't do yeah. this. They didn't do this 10 years ago, yeah. but now they've been beaten up by telemarketers. And so they're, they're looking at that phone and they're making a decision just like all of us are, whether we're going to pick up the phone or not based on, do we know this person or not? So that was just the reason. But I mean, you gave me your honest answer. Now I don't feel so bad because I don't have the option to call back from my company yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, just, just, I just had one other question. This is yeah, uh, no problem. A, a little bit different. This is in the case of where I make an appointment with a seller to go visit their house. I run the comps, I get them printed out and then I take a look at all the problems in their house. I take a whole lot of photos. Are you actually sitting there right then and there on your first appointment, giving them an offer? Or are you leaving their house and saying, I'll call you back or I'll come back? I, I am sitting down at the coffee table, bro, belly to belly with my presentation offer. It's what I call the seller credibility offer packet. Okay. And it's a, it's, it's basically my, my pitch. I'll fill in the blanks right there. I'll actually, what I'll do is I'll tell the homeowner, Hey, um, I've looked around, you know, we've met and everything I've looked around. I've, I'm going to go, I'm going to step outside and walk around one more time. And then you may see me sit in my car for a few minutes. That's because I'm taking notes and calculate, calculating some things. I'd like to, I'd like to step back in here in a few moments, sit with you at the, the coffee table and uh and make an offer does that sound like that will work yeah that sounds great so that's exactly what i'll do then i'll slip out to the car i'll sit there i'll i'll, I'll do my thinking and my calculating i'll fill in the blanks on my my offer packet and then i'll go back into the house armed and ready to go okay so when you're doing that are you actually sitting there with your calculator and saying okay the bathrooms need to be right done okay that's that's seven thousand there like are you actually calculating all this and then bringing back those detailed numbers 
or are you just kind of winging it saying, I'm estimating $45,000 in repair costs or uh, a renovation little bit, costs? A little bit of both. I've done it for a while, so I kind of have a, a general sense of what it's going to cost. Uh, so I can ballpark it pretty closely. I might be five or 10 off. Okay. okay. And it's going to, it's not going to be a, an exact science for me anyway, because each buyer is going to have their own price tag that they're going to put on it because one guy can do it cheaper than the other guy. And so okay. I'm never, I'm never going to be right on the money, but I, I just want to get in the ballpark as good as I can. So I've seen the spreadsheets where you fill in the blanks and you check off old bathroom, old new vanity, new tub, new toilet, uh, you know, walls, plaster, scrape, paint, blah, blah. You go through and you itemize everything. I've seen programs where you do that online. I've seen the spreadsheets where you do it uh, manually. But by the time you go through all of this stuff and you realize, okay, well, I've gotten to $45,000. That's what it adds up to. I spent 30 minutes of my life itemizing this like I'm some kind of general contractor, which I'm not. And so, um, you know, what I do is, is I'm just like, okay, bathroom, uh, yeah, roof, foundation, HVAC. Okay, great. Yeah, it, we're ballparking this somewhere around 40, 45,000. Gotcha. So you are giving. So yeah. that is the man. So that is the plan. You're going there yeah. armed and ready, and That's you it. are. You have every intention of giving them your offer before you leave their driveway. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially in this market, man, with the economy roaring, it's a seller's market. If I walk out of this house without making an offer, there is a strong likelihood that the next we buy houses guy is 45 minutes away on his appointment. And he's going to leave an offer and guess who's going to lose the deal. Right. Okay. That's gotcha. what I, that's what my opinion is. Um, so yeah, I do it all right there in house. Now the question then becomes, well, what happens when you're wrong on the estimates and it wasn't 45, there was a foundation issue you didn't know about and it came back at 60. Okay. Well then I go back to the homeowner and I say, Hey, listen, and my initial estimate and all of uh, all the things that we've talked about, remember I said the, the, the repair costs were going to be about 45000 I was wrong. It's 60000 And just so I know, happen. but let me, let me ask you, just so I know, yeah. who is telling you? Are you actually like my are buyers? You, my buyers. So your buyers are telling yeah. you this prior to actually even visiting the house. They're just no, no, looking no, at no, 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 no. What I'm saying is after my buyers get in the house, if they come out and say, hey, that wasn't a $45,000 job, by the way, that was a $60,000 repair job. Uh, and that kills the numbers. Okay. Then I'll go back to the homeowner and I'll say, hey, listen, man, the numbers were off because your house needs $15,000, $20,000 more work than I thought. So I'm going to have to walk away or we're going to have to modify our deal a little bit. Which do you prefer? Right. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense where I'm coming from? It makes perfect sense where you're coming from. Yeah. You might have to do a little renegotiation if you're, if you're off on your numbers, but you know, try to do it. If you want to use those spreadsheets where you itemize things and they put the dollar figures in, hey, that's cool. Go, go for that. But after a while, kind of get a feel for it. You know what I mean? And then you I don't have to. Do you see, this, you this is the part that makes me very nervous. The sales part, I can learn that very, very quickly. I can, figure it all out, put things in the right sequence, build rapport, but actually estimating renovation costs is something that I'm, I'm positive. I'm going to be br yeah. brilliantly terrible at. Uh, nah, nah. <laughs> schedule a, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me and I'll go through the big five with you and, and any other things that might pop up and I'll, I'll make a, I can give you a, probably a 10, 12 bullet point, piece of paper that'll okay. that'll help you get in the guesstimate range gotcha okay yeah. hey clint oh. i'm listening oh sorry um there and, and justin you you interject here but there there's some formulas out there that are just just a roundabout guesstimate uh and and they're kind of like uh, well if it needs paint and carpet you just take the square footage times 10 bucks if it needs a little more than that, you go 15 bucks. And I mean, there, and, and then like, if it's a, I don't know, I want I don't want to say total gut, but if it's pretty heavy duty reno, you, you, you go 20 bucks and you just take it 
times the square footage of the house and and I don't know, what do you think of that, Justin? But I've, I've heard of that and I've found it to be, yeah. you've got to tweak your numbers, but it's a good guideline. Like, like Justin was saying, you know, you can go out and sit in your car, but if you don't want to sit there for hours with a calculator, that right. might be a good avenue for you to just put a, throw a figure at it, you know. I used to do that, Kelly. Um, I don't do that anymore. And the, the reason why is I just feel like this is a more simple process to do. But um, yeah, uh, I used to itemize things. I used to try to, to figure out the ballpark. Uh, and then, then I also tried the method of, you know, the square foot times 10 times 15 times $20, uh, depending on how rough it is. And then my buyers were coming in and blowing me out of the water, man. And the reason why is because they were like $20 Twenty dollars a square foot? Are you kidding me? This is a thirty-five thousand dollar repair job at least. And I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm wrong. I'm wrong again on the repair costs. <laughs> okay, so what's a better method for me to do? And so really, I just, I just kind of uh, started with the itemization, you know, game, and and I studied it for like maybe a whole weekend. You know, and just kind of got the feel for, oh, bathrooms are about this. You know, um, actually, you know, I can do a bathroom really realistically in a, in a normal house in this market for about three grand, maybe 3,500, and it'll be real snazzy. Okay. So, you know, like after a while, you learn, you learn that. <laughs> but study, study the charts that they, you know, that are out there and the, and the programs that are out there, play around with them for a weekend, get a good feel for it. And then um, another thing that's really good if you're doing ugly house stuff is to have a buyer or two go with you when you go look at a deal. Okay. Ask, and tell them, hey, under the promise that when I get one, you'll have the first exclusive look at it. Okay. And, and that's, that's the deal. Go with me. I'm new. Tell me what you look at and you'll have the first exclusive look at any deals I get in this area that meet your criteria. I won't show them to nobody until I showed them to you because you're willing to help me. That's what I've done. I've taken buyers with me and I've had them educate me. Okay. This Great is a idea. 30, yeah. This is a $35,000 job here. And here's why, because you got 5k and HVAC because you're going to need a new roof and that's going to somewhere be between five and 10, probably eight. Okay. And then you're also going to need this and need that foundation repair. You're going to need to redo the electrical. That's going to be at least another 5k. So now you add all that shit up. Plus you're going to need to reside the outside of the house because did you notice it's asbestos? Okay. So yeah. Gotta watch and, for that. So after you've gone out a couple times with a buyer, then you you really get some hands-on experience too, and not only that, you build a great relationship with that buyer. You've got a you've got a you've got a guy ready to do the deal as soon as you come out with a property. Okay, this is a great Clint. suggestion. I had not thought of that. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you, Justin. Yeah, Clint, are you doing? Are you, are you just doing stuff up in your neck of the woods, or are you are you like virtual in, in down in the states? The master plan is just to stick to Toronto and surrounding area to begin. Oh, okay. I thought you were doing virtual stuff, and that's just Justin. That was kind of the, why I was saying, you know, put a put a dollar figure to it based on. I thought he was doing virtual stuff. But, I think your idea oh. still applies, though, right here in Toronto. Uh, you know, like I, I've I've heard that suggestion. It's a great idea. I love it because it's so simple, and simple is what I need in the beginning because there's a million things going through my head, especially when I'm not really a house guy. I've always lived in condos, so. This I thought if my, it's nothing else, it would give you a, maybe not seal the deal, but I, I remember talking to Justin a while back and I said, what, what if, what if I, uh, you know, it, it, somebody's got a house for a hundred grand and I think it's worth, uh, or I think it's got 20 grand in, in repairs. So I offer him 80, you know, obviously not doing the 70% thing, but just, just for round numbers. And he said, well, hey, get your buyer out there or get a, you know, get a contract or whatever. And then if it, if it ends up being, you know, 30, 40,000 in repairs, then you just go back and say, hey, you know, we didn't know the foundation was messed up. I just walked around the outside and in my dress clothes and I, I, I didn't get in the crawl space. And he said, just go back and re negotiate. So, 
you know, I, I thought that was some great advice, definitely from from Justin. But if nothing else, if if, if you're putting your numbers together, when the guy says, you know, hey, I'm not going to take a dime less than ninety or ninety five, you're like, just just from just from what I what I know, it's, it's a, on a good day, it's worth eighty. You know, so, I mean that that lets you know that if if you even have a chance at negotiating with this dude. You know, they're not willing to budge, but anyway. Well, I'm expecting everybody to hate my offers. I've been told if they don't hate my offers, I'm offering too high. Exactly. <laughs> You're not embarrassed. <laughs> you know, they use expressions like that. They say if it doesn't make you cringe, if it doesn't make you want to throw up a little bit, then you're offering way too much because they're going to beat you down regardless. So you, right. we all have to, we all have to expect that. So, right. Yep, you know, that's sure. that's it. And uh, probably a line I'll be using all the time, I'll say, that's way out of my price range. Probably what you should do, Mr. Smith, is you should look for a realtor. That's where you're going to get your best, your top dollar to begin with. After and so, uh, yeah, I've, that's that's it. After six to nine months, you should have your property. Of course, you're going to need to borrow maybe forty to fifty-five thousand dollars from some family members. Obviously, they trust you. They'll be happy to loan you the fifty-five thousand to renovate. And after two or three months, the renovations will be fully completed. Your project, your property will look beautiful. It'll be right up to 2019 standards and you can sell that on the MLS for top dollar. So I can even help you do that if you're interested. Right. Yep. And then wait for the person to say, I can't borrow 55 grand from my family members. They don't trust me. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, something like, something like that. Yep. Uh, anyway, well so said. thank you. Uh, thank you, Kelly. That's great. And once again, Justin, thank you for doing what you always do. You're fantastic. You do it seven days a week and all of us, <laughs> all of us are grateful. And I, yeah. uh, I, I just, I, I don't know why I didn't think to say this before, but thank you for doing what you do, Justin. Absolutely. Hey dude, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. It means a lot to me to hear, hear folks say that from time to time. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And uh, love you guys very, very much. And uh, I really enjoy our, our camaraderie and uh, our humor and I enjoy our work. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. We're working on ourselves, we're working on our businesses, we're working on our craft, our skills. And I like it. I like having uh, good guys and, and gals to polish the wheel here with, you know, it makes it more enjoyable. <laughs> very, very true. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, so anybody people get to invest in that these days? Say it again. I say there's a lot of people getting into investing in real estate these days now. It's like oh. the new thing. It's like it's been around for thousands of years and all of a sudden everybody's treating it like it's like a new internet strategy and everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. I tell people, I wish I had paid attention 10 years ago. This is something that we're never going to have to relearn. I've been in so many different types of businesses. Many of them I've had to reinvent myself. I had to relearn stuff. And I said, this I want to make my last business for the next 60 years. That's it. No more, no more, no more learning 20 different businesses. I just want to learn real estate inside and out. Yeah. Amen, brother. I'm like you, Clint. You know what? It's all, this is my last go round. If it don't go this way, it won't go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And by the way, if anybody, I'll just put this out there. If anybody ever wants to do roll calls, uh, I'm working nonstop. So just ping me. Uh, I'm on, uh, I'm right here on on Facebook. I said, I just checked. I sent, there's a, there's a friend request out there, Edward. It didn't get received yet. So I, I'm trying. To try. <laughs> I just checked. Okay. I didn't, I didn't realize, I, I didn't realize I'd sent you a friend request already. I was just about to, and then I was going to say, oh, Kelly. Really? sorry. I'm going to get on here right now and see. Yeah. And Kelly, I'll just find you. I'll find you in the group because I don't see your name or your last name. Excuse me. Johnson. John, there we go. <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's been one of those phone calls. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, Kelly, I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought that was funny, but man, it, just, it hit me. Get it all the time, buddy. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good old American name, I'll tell you that. That's for sure. After all the talk about going both ways, <laughs> I can understand why when someone shoots out Johnson, you think, oh, boy. <laughs> Just one of those calls. Oh, 
my God. I love Kelly. He's such a great guy. Uh, okay. All right, guys. Good. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off if you guys don't have anything else. But uh, I've enjoyed it. Thank you for spending some time with me tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll chat again soon in the VIP club room. Did you get it, Clint? I did. I just saw it pop up on my phone. Thank you very much. And uh, Kelly, I'll send you a friend request as well. If I haven't already, I'm not sure. Maybe I haven't, oh, but I good. will. Thank so you, again, Justin. Thank you, Clint. You know, Thank you, Edward. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I probably didn't check you. With You know what? With, the, with this social media, so many people, you know, so many people hacking into your account. It seems like I'm getting friend requests from the same people that's already my friend. Wow. That is, that is weird. I have not heard of that. I've heard... Well, okay. Well, I won't hack into your account. I promise you that much. No, no, no. There's other people <laughs> hacking into your account. Just like we no. friends, then I might get another friend request from Clinton. I would have to text you and say, Clinton, did you send me another request? Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, I'll keep my eyes out for that. So, Clint said he's not going to hack into your account, and I promise you too, Edward, I'm not going to hack into your account again. Okay? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> what would tell me that to watch it because somebody clacking your uh, uh, uh. Uh, whack into my account and steal my money out of my bank. I say, if they whack at my account, they're going to send me a letter saying they saw for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody said. I want to to Justin's account, bank account. That's what I want to do. Oh, yeah. Get some of that shut up money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's funny. Uh, yeah, it's like somebody was talking. They said, you know, if somebody stole my ID, you know, because that's, that's the big thing, people stealing people's identities. If somebody stole my identity, they'd bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Funny because my brother lives in Hawaii, right? And he he he, he somebody broke in his account and took about twenty thousand dollars out of his account. So wow. he found, and I say, well, you should get you a prepaid card so I'd use it online. About a month later, somebody went in his account and stole thirty thousand out. Wow. Oh my goodness! Wow, he, that's he, unlucky. He, Is he married? He was, huh? <laughs> I said, "Is he married?" Yeah, he married, but his okay. wife, she, his wife, she, he, he married a native Hawaiian from over there, Hawaii, and they family rich. They ain't stealing it. They giving him money. Okay, wow. I'm just checking. <laughs> <laughs> just checking. <laughs> right. Uh, that's crazy. All right, guys. Y'all okay, have guys. Great, y'all have a great evening, man. You guys you as well. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Kelly, Clint. Take care, guys. <laughs>